Good day everyone, and how is it going? It's wonderful. We got a Chevy truck. It's a 2018 and it's got an eight inch touchscreen in it. Sadly, it doesn't have bows, but that's not gonna stop us today with our plan of attack on this bad boy. We're putting a ton of stuff in this. Let's talk about it for a minute, shall we? What's going on, Fernando? What's going on? How's your day? It's awesome. I figured awesome. it would be. He started on the rear speaker, so that's a good place for us to start. Let's talk about some speakers. So in this truck, we're gonna do some Morel coaxials in the rear, Morel components in the front, which we'll talk about more in a minute. We're gonna put some Comp RTs in a Bright Star Car Audio box, specially made for this truck. Power-wise, we're gonna go with this guy right here, the 1005 from Rockford. We're doing this one because it, it's so small and it's gonna fit perfect where we wanna put it. We're gonna tune it all with, of course, the DSR-1. This is the factory eight inch touchscreen. Now there's been a lot of uh, about this because it's not bows. No bows grow. What a lot of people have been waiting for is the ability to add in either an Amp Pro or an Nav TV piece if you got that kind of money. There's a problem. How the radio software is built is for some reason what it does is it takes all the tuner, meaning AM, FM, satellite, and it does some weird stuff with it when it's attaching to the most bus in the car, which has a result doesn't allow a stereo left and right to pass out of the preamp section when adding on these devices. It just puts out, let's say a left or a right. We don't know which one. It just randomly picks it and puts that out, which sucks. What they've decided to do is not release it as, as a compatible model for those. Now Nav TV goes ahead and they sell you a new tuner where they've gone ahead and fixed it. Really expensive. In this case, let's say you don't listen to AM FM or you listen to very little AM FM and you listen to no serious satellite radio. Well then you fit the criteria of someone who could just simply add an amp pro right now knowing that there's going to be some people out there that fit the criteria for this and that they don't care about am fm they still might want to listen to some talk shows here and there or just get the news and stuff like that a thought occurred well what if we take the left or right channel whichever one it's playing and we sum them output wise basically two left channels or two right channels it means it's not stereo or it's not mono it's just it's a left or it's a right. So if, if you're listening to something and there is a left channel to it and you only have the right channel, you won't hear that. Some songs that have like a double beat, you know, where it goes left, right, left, right, left, it's just gonna go right, 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 right. And you're not gonna hear it, but it's gonna play out of both speakers. So it is gonna sound kind of weird. Then again, if that's not anything you're concerned about because you're gonna be listening to your phone or a CD or whatever it is, CD, <laughs> then this is something for you. Now they, there again, as I was saying, they thought of this and because they thought of this put a hidden switch so that you can sum that channel over now we'll talk about that as soon as we get to the amp pro in a couple minutes we'll walk you through the steps and, and we'll take the dash apart we're gonna go all through that you can bet on that one other thing we're gonna be putting in is a base knob this guy right here we're gonna hook it up to the DSR one instead of the amp because there again we can do more things with the DSR one down the road if we ever decide to because DSR one has like an aux input and all this other stuff and you can use it as a master volume so once you get it into the app you can decide what you want to do with the base knob we're gonna use it a base knob for right now but if we ever wanted to change it, it's way easier to do connected to the DSR-1 than connect to the amplifier. So that's going to be fun. Then we're going to do road kill and fast rings on the front door because the stuff's expensive. Let's not kid yourselves. And the rear doors are rear doors. So they're just there for rear fill. Some of you guys don't even want rear fill. And the fact that I'm even mentioning rear fills, like you're going, oh, why rear fill? It's okay. It's what it is. Now Fernando's gone ahead and started on the rear doors. So let's go ahead and join him taking apart the rear door and getting our cool morels put in. But first, before we do that, let's unbox them and take a look at them. Then we'll come back and meet Fernando. Is that okay, buddy? That's awesome. I figured you wouldn't mind. All right, let's unbox some speakers. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Morel Virtus 602s. Now this is gonna be a six and a half inch component. Meaning we have a six and a half inch mid bass and tweeter with a passive crossover. In the box, ooh, we get a cool sticker. Oh, awesome. And some basic instructions. We get the mid range with a metal grill. This is metal. Yeah, wow, that's, that's pretty impressive. So if you need a grill, this one's metal. For those of you guys aren't familiar with Morel, what makes Morel just one of the my personal favorite brand is the voice coil. These have some of the biggest voice coils that you'll ever see. See that bluish green thing there? That's the voice coil. It's basically this big around. All right, now if you've seen a speaker before, you know the voice coils are more smaller. These have huge voice coils, which means you get tons of control. Because of the way it's designed, it's not as efficient as some of the other speakers. 
features because it has that bigger voice coil. It slows it down a little bit, but it's that that is what makes this speaker sound amazing. It also increases the power handling drastically. Mmm, yummy. Now, of course, it comes with a tweeter. And this has a removable grill. It's got a little cover over it, so if you are removing the grill, you don't have to worry about anybody putting their finger on it. And we have a bag of mounts. So we have an angle mount. We have a smaller angle mount. These are your standard, you know, mount like this, mount like that. Then you have your flush mount. This is what we'll be using to mount this into the dash of this car. Bag of screws, bag of terminals. Ooh, these are pretty. Comes with little stickers that you can put on the grills. And then it comes with this guy here. This is an angled flush mount, so it's designed to mount flush, but the tweeter is gonna sit in it at an angle. It reminds me of an older Honda style where you put it in the factory, it had it over by the handle, and it aimed it towards the driver. So that's pretty cool. So we have tons of tweeter mounting capability. And then lastly, let's take a look at the pass crossover. So this is the passive crossover. Inside of it here, it has the attenuation. We have plus two, zero, and negative two. It has a standard six crew connector. It's not bi -ampable. You have your amp in in the center, tweeter on the outside, mid-range on the outside, and it's negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And then look at the quality of this thing. I mean, wow. Now to get to this, what you're gonna do is pop one of these covers off here. Go ahead and attenuate it down to negative two. We always like to start on negative two. I'm gonna go ahead and put these over on Fernando's bench. For the rear, we're gonna do the Tempo Ultras. This is the 602 as well, an Integra. Now, in the Moreau line, Integra means coaxial. So this is gonna be the coaxial for the rear. Now this line is the next line down from the Virtus. It's gonna have a standard style magnet on the back, but in typical Morel fashion, it's still gonna have an oversized voice coil. So though not as big as the Virtus, it still has a big voice coil. Tweeters mounted here as a point source in the center, and it's a giant tweeter for a point source. Most of the time, these guys are pretty small, like half inch. This is, yeah, full one inch tweeter in the center. Now these don't have grills. There again, I'm gonna go put these over on Fernando's bench. So before you start taking the door panel out, just grab your pry tool. Uh, this is a 2018. This looks like similar to 2016 and 17. So behind this handle. And that's a seven millimeter. Now in the other handle next to the window switch. It's another cap. That's two seven millimeters. Then from there, just go around the door panel. And the bottom side, it's one seven millimeter. So from there, we can grab our plastic pry tool and just go around it. So this one has the plug for the window, the clip to open the door. Now this door, it doesn't pull up. It actually has four metal clips. So you grab your plastic pry tool, put it from the outside and just pry it. Now that we have our door panel out, we can remove our speaker. For the speaker brackets, we're gonna use the best kits VK GM SV356. Looks like the factory one. So this speaker is kind of big. Are we gonna break these tabs? It's gonna go like this. We're gonna put some foam in the back and the front, and then we screw it in. Now we're gonna use the factory screw. And because the best kit has two tabs with the hole, we're gonna put two screws so it get more rigid. Looks like the green is positive and the green black is of course negative. Once you get that one. So before we talk about this guy right here, the APGM61, which is the amp pro we're gonna use in this, we need to get the radio out of the dash, or at least the bezel off, because we need to make sure that the harnesses line up before we start talking about this and getting all excited about it. We wanna make sure the thing plugs in. One of the key things anytime you're doing an adapter like this is to make sure it plugs in before you get all excited about it. We got excited the other day, only to find out two totally different harnesses wasn't gonna work, so check first. Now to get this dash bezel out, there is a ton of clips all around here to take this piece off. Vinyl panel tool, just start prying in one of the corners and go slow. 
Now anytime you're moving a panel like this, what you'll find is there's gonna be a sweet spot somewhere that once you get that one corner, it's gonna allow you to get the other corners. This is the back here. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten metal clips holding on this one little flimsy piece of plastic. Now we have four seven millimeters. Along with the seven millimeters, there's two clips on the back that hold this in place. And then there's two plugs, along with one for the air conditioner. Just go ahead and unplug them. Now once you get the display off, you'll see this stuff here. So obviously this is the CD player. So if it has one of those, it's mounted here on the bottom. Next up from there is going to be your infotainment hub. So Sirius XM, in this case Wi-Fi. That's all this shelf right here. And then the top shelf, this guy, this is your actual radio. So these are your two power plugs here. And this is what we want to get to. We have a gray one, we have a green one. That's important because depending on the model, there's different plugs. So the gray one here is the constant. Most of them have the gray plug. This is the power. The green one here though is the one that's different this is your speaker sometimes these are like a mustard color and there's variations on that now we can head over to the bench and take a look at the amp pro Right, so for those of you aren't familiar with the T1005, what we have is a five channel amplifier here. So this has 100 watts by four at four ohm. And then for the sub, it's 600 by one at one ohm. So it's gonna be plenty of power for what we're trying to do. Now in the box, you have these little guys here, which are the RCAs slash high levels. So if you're gonna be doing high level, you cut the RCAs off. If you're doing RCAs, you leave them on for low level. And then it comes with these two guys here, which are your speaker plug outputs. The sub one is already on the amplifier here. It's a bigger plug and then of course the power plugs come off as well and it has an input for a bass knob now as far as the dsr1 goes it's this guy right here on the side of it you have high level low level switch we want to leave it for low level right now you have the programmer which we're going to go ahead and program this in and make sure that it's up to date as far as software goes anytime you do one of these make sure you plug it in check the software and then you have your output rca plug and your input high level low level plug now this also will work with an ar from idata so there's actually three types of connectors that you can use to make this guy work. So we went ahead and plugged it in. We see it's on 1.7. If you go to rockfordfosgate.com, you can go to the DSR-1 and download this as well as the latest update. Now the purpose of an Amp Pro is so that you can get a clean output, meaning clean. It's not a high level, low level adapter, so it's not choking the sound down so that you can reamplify it. It is a preamp section to a factory radio. This is something we've dreamed of for years and years and years because after all, it wouldn't have been great if your radio just would have a preamp section on it to begin with, right? These are designed to do that. Now, most of the time, you need a factory amplified system because it's using that output going to the factory amplifier to give us our preamp section. But the way GM designed this is it created this idea that we might not need that. And this is the first one that is giving us the ability to do that. Unfortunately, as we said earlier, it's not perfect, but it's close enough. Now, one of the key features about Amp Pro is that Amp Pro allows you to keep the factory amplifier as well as adding a secondary amplifier. If you were just going to do an Amp Pro where you just wanted to add a subwoofer, no problem. You can do that and let the factory amplifier play all the other speakers. But on each Amp Pro, you're going to have six channel, five volt preamp output. So this one also adds in a Tosh link for the digital connection if you're going to do that. And then on the other side, you have a bunch of dip switches. The secret dip switch for this case is number three. It's not in the instruction manual, but if you flick number three, that's what's gonna sum the FM and AM and satellite over to that channel. And of course it comes with a T harness and a bass knob. We'll go ahead and plug this in because this is also gonna do things like control chime volume and stuff like that. So we do need to have access to it, but we're not gonna mount it anywhere. We're gonna be using the bass knob for the DSR-1. Along with dip switch three that we turned on, there's also three other dip switches. So taking a look at the instructions real quick, We'll go ahead and we can see what those are. First one is channel two mode. In this mode, both the Tosh link and the front RC outputs one and two become non-fading outputs. All rear chimes will also be routed through these outputs into channel mode. Number two is for five volt slash four volt. So if you're using a device that's having a hard time with the five volt output that this has, you can flick it and it'll bring it down to four volt. And then three is of course the hidden switch and four is nothing. On page three, it's gonna go ahead and describe to you where this tuner is at so that you can plug in. We're gonna be using the gray connector and we're gonna be using the eight pin secondary gray connector. So we're not gonna be using that gray 
green or mustard color harness here. But we will need this harness for tapping into our speaker wires. One other thing this has, if you're not gonna be using DSP like we are, you can plug this in and you can change your bass, mid, and treble center frequencies so you can actually use them as a three band EQ if you want. Now right now we're gonna go ahead and get this plugged into the car and make sure it functions the way we need it to. So we'll start by unplugging our two gray harnesses. So we have our stuff plugged in. Let's go ahead and turn this guy on and we're gonna hook up an amplifier to these and make sure we have a left and right tuner section. All right, so we have this plugged back in. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and plug a test amplifier in here and make sure we have sound for the tuner coming out of left and right. Even though we know it's not stereo, we just wanna make sure it's still doing what it's supposed to do. We have our dork amplifier plugged into the front outputs of our pack module. Let's go ahead and turn this guy on. Chime is so loud. So one of the reasons why we want to use this in the first place is that god awful chime, it's so loud. Now this gives us the ability to turn that down on the outputs of this, but first we need to make sure the outputs work. So right now we still have the factory speakers hooked up, so we're gonna hear those, but we can just easily turn the volume up on this, and then turn our dork volume up. We get sound out of that channel. And we get sound out of that channel. Now let's go ahead and pull this radio back out and unplug the speakers. This is the Car AV12232. We get this on Amazon. And it's a T harness for an FM modulator and a Volvo. But it is also a go-to plug on just about every GM and Ford, it seems like. And it's usually pretty close. And in this case, as you can see, it plugs in. This is definitely gonna be the harness we want. Now what this is gonna give us is our speaker wire outputs and allow us to retain the power and ground that goes into this plug. The one thing I will tell you about this though is the wires don't mean anything. Like, there's all different color wires on here. These don't match up with these color wires. All we want is a T harness that'll get us plugged in. I don't care about the colors of the wire. I can make those whatever I want. I can fix those. I can move those around. We just want to make sure that things plug in so we don't have to cut anything. So now we'll head over to the bench and we'll remake this harness into something we can use. We don't need the speaker level outputs coming out of this, so we can remove those. All we need is the two power and grounds that are coming out to be hooked up. And then we need these speaker wires, which aren't gonna be in the right order, but we can move this stuff around and get it all set and ready to go. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that testing is key to anything you do in car audio. We do a lot of new things. Cars are changing constantly, and we get these products in like an Amp Pro, like a DSR-1. We've never worked with them before. We're gonna put them into your car. We wanna test these things first before we get totally deep into this. We test them. We make sure that there's no issues. I hate being surprised at the end of the install. It's not that it doesn't happen. Sometimes it does. And a lot of the times, like in this case, we rely on the manufacturer to do the testing, and we're doing something that they don't recommend because of the FM thing. So we wanna make sure it works before we go any further. Having a small amplifier like the Dork Amplifier accomplishes that for us and allows us to do some testing so that we can move forward with confidence that we're on the right path. the factory side going into the box all we're gonna need is these two wires here so we've removed all the wires we're not gonna be using now on this side we need to match those up so that's gonna be these two guys here and then we're gonna need the eight wires and these holes over this side Oh, well, those of you that are wondering what pin tool I'm using is a Delphi 12094429. We have a link to these in DNF tool drawer. So now what we need to do is solder these two wires together, and then we'll go ahead and put the shrink wrap over these so we know which ones are which. We have these wires here that we want to add some shrink wrap to. We could go into the car, use the PT9A, polarity test all this. We're going to cheat a little because I want to move this thing along. We went ahead and went next door and we grabbed the LCGM51. This would be the harness you'd use if you were going to replace the radio on this car. You notice it's the same. So what we want to do is go ahead and add on our shrink wrap using these color codes. Now for those of you playing at home, if you want to look at it, when you have the clip up top here, the row across the top are gonna to be the positives, the row across the bottom are gonna be the negatives. And the pattern goes white, gray, green, purple. 
we have our four sets of wires here. We can go ahead and plug this into the car and it'll be all set and ready for when we actually need it later on in the install. For the front doors, we're gonna do the same as the rear behind this handle. This one is different. You're gonna grab your plastic pry tool and carefully you're gonna go around the silver and comes from the bottom side first so you don't break these tabs. It's a seven millimeter. That it's holding the window switches. Now we can unplug that. So it's gonna be more easy when we pull the door panel so we don't have to fight. So the second plug from the front to the back has a clip. Make sure you grab your pick tool, slide it up and then you can push it and make sure you push it back so you don't lose the top we have another seven millimeter in the bottom actually it's two on the door switch on the hole it's another seven millimeter there you go. Before you remove the, the door panel, it's good to have another hand so they can hold the door panel so you can unclip this monster harness. For the front doors, we're gonna use the best kits VKGM S V306. They came with Twitter mounts for the dash. Also, you can do six by nine if you got this the inside or six and a half. We need some place to put all our stuff. So the Amp Pro and the DSR-1, we wanna put it someplace that's easier to get to than removing the 10 clips behind there. My thought is putting it behind the glove box. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and see how hard that is. So four T-15s, get this guy out of here. So there's no room behind the glove box for any of this stuff, but we are able to fit the Amp Pro in here rather nicely. And we still have the DSR-1. Now before I forget, I like to always put tape over these little dip switches. Let's go ahead and do that since we're manhandling it in the dash a little bit. We don't want them to get bumped and screw up our whole install. The other thing too to consider is this blue white wire. This is the remote turn on that we're gonna use for this install. So we wanna make sure we have access to that. So we may need to lengthen it some. So with a little bit of wire management, we've gotten the Amp Pro up here above the CD player, fitting really nice. So we will have to lengthen that remote turn on to come out to meet up with these guys here. But other than that, this is this is perfect. Now we just have the DSR-1. Now the only reason why I wanna keep this up front is there is no reason why I wanna keep this up front. Now the plan was to go ahead and try to keep this up front for space management because there's not a lot of space in the back for this stuff because we have the amps, the crossovers. And I was hoping to put this somewhere up here to keep it a simpler install, but I don't think that's gonna happen. I think we're gonna have to mount this in the back with the amplifier in order to keep this clean and tidy. Now that we have the dash squared away, this isn't going in there. We wanna to move to the back and start on the amp rack, the crossovers, and get all those guys squared away. We're gonna start heating up some plastic and making this all fit. But let's take a look at the area where we're planning on putting this stuff. So this is the space here. So this is where the lug nut wrench is. We've gone ahead and removed it. And that's why we picked this amp. So we know this one will fit right here with no issues. But what we wanna do is we need to now figure out we're gonna mount this. We got these two guys here, and now we have the DSR-1 that all has to fit in this area and line up nice and whatnot. So we do have plenty of room. There's no question about it because everything is nice and skinny. We can go right through here. I don't think we'll have any problems. We also can go back up some, but we wanna make sure we have everything easy to get to and serviceable if we can. And that's why we chose this instead of going behind the seat. Let's take some measurements. So the basic layout that we've come up with is the amp mounted here, crossovers in the back, DSR-1 over here. We're planning on running the power wire down the driver's side, and we're gonna run the signal down the passenger side. Even though in this car the battery is on the passenger side, it's way easier to go through the driver's side on this than to try to fight going through the passenger side. What we're gonna need is we're gonna need a piece of plastic that is about 26 inches long and about 11 and a half inches deep. The idea is to 
make one solid piece and then have it bend in the back to mount these on there so they're kind of on display. And then we'll cut the base of it to fit this and this. Get over to the saw. Now for the amp rack, we're gonna be using quarter inch ABS. It's very strong, very rigid. So we have our basic shape. Now what we wanna do is draw on it how we want it to be cut for all the ins and outs of what we're doing. This is the basic shape we wanna end up with. These X's mark the area we want to remove. This line is where we're actually gonna do our bend. This is the back side because we want this to be the front side. So this is actually drawn in reverse. Now we're gonna take this over to saw and remove all these little pieces. Also a slight S bend in the floor. So what we want to do is go ahead and mimic that right here. All right, we have our mock-up done. Let's take a look. Amplifier, crossovers, DSR1, mounting bracket, the actual panel. This was that little S bend we wanted to put in, but that's it. it goes in there, finds the screw drops into place. Now that we have the amp board done, here comes the fun part. We gotta wire this thing up. That's where all the beauty comes in, the magic happens. Let's get started. So we finished doing the roll kill. We put the speaker. Now the final touch is gonna be the fast ring. Now let's put the door panel back together. Yummy, yummy. All we have to do is we're going to run the power wire down here underneath the carpet this way and then we're going to run all this signal wire up and behind the seat and come back down this way. And when the seat closes we have plenty of room here, nothing's touching. Now when removing these floor sills here you're going to want to start from the front not the back because there's actually a ton that goes here so go ahead and pry up from here and there's little clips all along this way so you kind of have to go left right left right left right and work your way back. Once you get it off you'll see these are the clips areas I was talking about but you'll have this guy right here, which is the cover for the wiring. There again, there's clips left, right, and they stagger like this. You wanna go ahead and carefully remove those so that you can run your wire through this tunnel. Now once you get it off, it'll look something like this, where you'll have a bundle of wires going through it. If you push it left or right, there'll be enough room for you to get your wires along in here. And then you can go ahead and snap this back on. So these are the little clips that are staggered left, right, left, right. Now one more piece you have to get off is the B-pillar mount here. And there again, 
start at the top, slowly work your way down. It has these four red clips here. Now these clips, no other way to put it, these things suck. It's a plastic clip with a metal clip attached to it. These love to go pink, pink. So make sure you get in there with your panel tool and pop them off. And don't try to pop this one off from this side, like you're pulling it back and you want to get it off. Always go from the side you want to remove the clip on. If you put too much stress on it, that's what causes these to fall off. Now luckily if they do fall off, you can follow it down and usually pick them up down here in the bottom and snap them back into place if you lose them. So now that we know what kind of mount we're going to use for the tweeters, let's go to the vise, let's drill a hole for the bracket. So this one is done, let's go and put it into the car. So we have all the wire ran through the car now. We have the passenger side, the driver's side put back together. We have everything hanging out in the dash. Let me show you. So we went ahead and pulled the amp pearl back out and we took a sharpie and wrote front and rear. And then we also, like we said, we extended the remote turn on wire because it was kind of short. So now it's longer. We also went ahead and put in the base knob slash volume control. And then we went and zip tied it up into the glove box here so that it'll be accessible if we need to control the chime any further. We also went ahead and mounted the base knob for the DSR-1 down here. We unscrewed one of the factory screws, made a panel, and reattached it up in place because there really wasn't any place in the dash because he has the four-wheel drive switch to mount it to where it wouldn't be like destroy an expensive panel or just look good. Sometimes we can put it over here, but in this case he has the power outlet, so that wasn't gonna happen. So now that this is back in place, we have our RCAs. For this, we just ran a four channel RCA because the DSR-1 only has four channel input. So we just have front and rear and it's gonna create everything else we need. And of course, we'll control the subwoofer volume from this. We just need to get everything plugged in, get our wires soldered up, and then we'll be, well, we still gotta do the battery. So we're getting closer. One of the last things on the list of things to get done in this truck is the subwoofer enclosure. Now, depending on what Chevy you have, believe it or not, there's two different floors, a high transmission and a low transmission, and they're totally different. This is a low transmission. As you can see, the floor is basically flat, except for this like one little bump right here. This is the preferred one. This one, you can get a really nice box underneath the seat. The high transmission looks like a mountain range. It's like all kinds of bumpy and whatnot. Be careful when you buy the box because sometimes the woofer on one side or the other actually touches the floor. So don't get the cheap one. Go, go for the more expensive one or have it custom built. We've gone ahead and ordered our hand-built box from Bright Star Car Audio. Now each one of their boxes is built by hand. The other nice thing about it is we use them when we're needing a custom box built because we don't build them here. So I just call them up, I talk to Sean and say, hey, build me this box and he takes care of it for me. Let's go ahead and get this box wired up, get some comp RTs in it. Also, Fernando's just finishing up the fuse holder now. So we'll take a look at that too and see how that turned out. And while I'm thinking about it, before I forget, in this truck, if you're trying to get through the firewall, the easiest way to do it is when you'll know because you're in this, there's the big power distribution center that's like right here in the footwell. It's got three 10 millimeter bolts on it. Pull those 10 millimeter bolts, take the cover off. It's easy to take the cover off once you've unscrewed it and lift it up and over because one of the clips is next to the emergency brake. It's really hard to get to. Anyways, pull the cover off, slide it down. It comes down eh, a couple inches, but just enough for you to get up in there and you'll feel on there. There's all these little circles. And underneath the hood is that rubber boot that you see right there where our wire is coming out of. We have our 3M strip caulk around it. This guy right here. Now right there where our wire is coming out is a nipple that sticks out. You cut the nipple off. On the other side of it, you cut a little X in one of the circles and you can fish your wire right through the hole. You fit a pretty big wire. And of course you run it across and you can put your fuse holder in. The other nice thing about this is if you want to add a dual battery mount to this, 
it already has the plate right here on the driver's side for you to add your secondary battery. Now I'll get back to wiring up these subwoofers. The woofers we have are dual two ohm woofers. That means there's a voice coil here that's two ohms, there's a voice coil here that's two ohms. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a jumper from this positive to that negative, and we're gonna go ahead and solder on us a piece of 12 gauge here that's gonna connect to this negative and this positive. That's gonna turn this into a four ohm woofer. That's gonna make this a four ohm woofer, which in the end here in the middle is gonna give us two ohms. Now with this amplifier, it's one of Rockford's constant power amplifiers. So that means that at one ohm or two ohm, it puts out 600 watts. So in this case, it's gonna be running at two ohm, we're gonna get 600 watts. So for the fuse holder, we went ahead and used quarter inch ABS. Down here in the bottom, you'll see there's a bolt that we used. There's a hole in the plastic. We were able to put a 10 millimeter bolt through it to hold the whole thing in place. And of course it comes around in bolts and connects to the factory battery. Subwoofer box is in, amplifiers are in. Base now, everything is in. We need to start our testing. Charging our iPads right now because we're gonna need two of them. We're gonna need one iPad to run the iTest mic. We're gonna need the second iPad to run the DSR-1. But before we get to that, we need to turn it on, see if all the speakers are playing, do some polarity testing. We're three for six. Ooh, four, five, six. All right, we got six. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the tuning portion of it. Hey, don't forget the A-pillar covers. Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and get these lighting out so we can shut the doors. We also need to do some gain management here because right now the gains are turned all the way down. But we're gonna go ahead and log into the DSR-1 first and get our profile set up so we can act, because right now there's no crossovers or anything like that on it. It's very low. So we wanna make sure we get that taken care of. So when you're setting up a DSR-1, the first thing you wanna do, first thing you wanna do is go ahead and create a new user preset for it so that you can build off of it from there. So we're gonna go ahead and label this what it is. Now this also has a note section, so go ahead and add in the note. This is the Morel system. So once you've gone ahead and created that new user profile, what you wanna do is there's a little box with an arrow, tap that. It's gonna give you upload to device as an option. Tap that, and then what you'll notice here in the top corner is your new profile. If it still says preset or anything other than that, that's what you're working with. So you wanna make sure that you have whatever you're working with is loaded there in the corner. Now we can go ahead and go back to our homepage and we'll continue with the setup. First thing we wanna do is go to device setup, and then in the top there's a car icon here. Go ahead and tap that. This is gonna be a standalone unit. We're doing RCA level inputs. We flick the switch on the side of the unit. There's a switch on the side of the unit. High level, low level, you have to make sure you switch that. And then we're going to, yeah, you know what? We need to switch. This only has four volts input. So right now we have our unit set up for five volt. We really should switch it to four volt because this has a maximum input of four volts according to this. So we're gonna stop what we're doing right now. We're gonna go ahead and pull this bad boy apart. Shut the key off. We need to unplug the unit. Flick down dip switch two, which will give us a four volt output. Plug our power pack in. Now for this, we're using front and rear input. So we'll go ahead and select that, which is the default. It's gonna give an image of what we used. And then we wanna tell it what we're doing for installation. Are we doing front rear sub? Are we doing front rear center sub? In this case, we are doing front rear sub. So we'll select okay. We are using the subwoofer level control. So we'll go ahead and select that and we'll hit save. Now we can go back to home, select setup, check our preset, make sure we're still on the Chevy truck. We're good. That's the basic setup for the unit. Now you wanna go into your advanced tuning section and do a little bit of tuning on it. In this case, we're gonna immediately go into the crossovers. We're gonna turn those on because we don't have those. There again, go to the top right-hand corner. There's a speaker, select the speaker. We're gonna select the front two for right now. We're gonna put those on high pass and we're gonna set it for 80 Hertz. We're gonna select our rears and we're gonna do the same thing. We like to use 80 Hertz as just a starting point. All right, so like I said, we have the gains turned all the way down. We're gonna go ahead and take care of that issue right now. Now, the cool thing about these amplifiers is that they have a distortion detector very similar to the DD-1 built into them. So all we have to do is play some test tones and we will be back in business as far as that goes. And then we'll be able to turn the gains up and down. There's little lights on it. It's, it's exactly the same as the DD-1. Play our zero dB, a thousand hertz track. Turn the volume on the radio up. All the way up. Play the uh, play the 40 hertz one. Uh, 40 hertz, negative five. All right, so we have a preliminary gain setting all set and ready to go. Let's check the volume now. Oh. 
so what we're just basically doing at the moment is doing like a speaker check just to make sure everything is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Subs are working, the mids and highs are working, all that fun stuff. It's kind of what, you know, anytime we're doing something that's multi boxes like this, cause we got a box behind the radio, we got a box in the back. We just want to make sure everything is at least working in basic, basic. And it is, so we're, we're good there. All right, so we've been playing this thing for about uh, a really long time now, mm -hmm. getting the EQ about where we wanted it, having a lot of fun doing it, getting things dialed in. The main thing that we really were concerned with was the FM. Now, let's talk about that briefly for a minute and why we're concerned with this. So if you have this eight inch touchscreen, non-bows, okay, that's the key, non-bows. And we've talked about, we talked about this at the beginning of the show and that because this has non-bows, the FM is just gonna suck. And it really doesn't. It doesn't. Because we're using the DSR-1, we get to EQ it. Now, it's not stereo anymore, but it's not mono. It's a dual left or dual right channel. It's, so it's that channel being cloned. But so it's only on the FM. On the FM. That's the, it. Everything else, other, if it has an, an antenna, FM, AM, Sirius XM, that's what's affected. Mm -hmm. That's it. Everything else plays normal the way it's supposed normal. to, left and right, yay. But because we're using the DSP and able to EQ it a little bit, or a lot, yeah, it sounds sounds good. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not crap. You now, honestly, you can even hear like, oh wow. Yeah, I don't think anyone would suffer from this. Yeah, I don't no, know. I mean, no. I can understand why they're not promoting it as a feature because it's it's gonna suck in some situations. Yeah. Like rock, like early '80s, '70s, '80s rock that has that da -da 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 play with the drum. It's not gonna do that. It's gonna sound weird for sure. But if that's your favorite song and you're playing it on FM, uh, mm, time to upgrade. Yeah, uh, you know, buy it. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> Listen to it. Listen yeah. to it that way. We're gonna get back to listening to some more songs. And then we'll give our final review. Okay. In the way you... I like this song because the orchestra moves. Like yeah. you can hear, you can hear the room. Yeah. He has he has room behind him, and then when he sings, he's he's in this area here. And in one part of the song, the the sound moves from one side to another and come back. I wonder if that's nice. because like the guy was walking on the stage. And bro, I don't know, but it sounds sounds yeah. sounds really cool. So after listening to the FM a little bit, playing some classic rock and getting an idea for what that sounds like, honestly, it doesn't sound any worse than like Sirius XM. No. I mean, I feel Sirius XM is like one of the worst formats for listening to stuff. It's more of a convenience thing than anything else. I'm, I'm not disappointed. I gotta be honest with you. I've, hey, you? these customers actually don't listen FM. No, he never listens He's to like, any, uh, Yeah. That's why he agreed to do it because yeah. he was like, I don't listen to FM or any of I, He goes, I've listened to maybe radio twice in two years, so. <laughs> That's a plus. It's a plus, but I don't think he's going to be disappointed no. if no, someone's no, no. in the car and has to listen to FM. I, I feel like this, you know, if, if you're an FM guy, I mean, if you're a serious XM person, you know what it sounds like. You know it doesn't have the greatest quality at all. Right. This is no worse than that. There's going to be times like the Who we were just listening to where it may sound a little funny, but I feel like if you don't know that's what it's doing, no. you would never you would know, never know. No. because you're exactly. driving down the road doing 60 miles an hour, top down, screaming. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's I think it's that's an okay good. thing. That's good. All right, we're done. We just finished. We did our final listen and just made sure everything was good. We got every all the dash and everything put back together. Amplifiers in, looking sharp. What do you think of the Morel Vertus? They're awesome. That's They're amazing. amazing. Yeah? yeah? I'm gonna agree with him on that. I'm kind of biased. I really like them a lot. The imaging that these things are giving us is just, it's so wide across the front, as we were saying when we were listening to Frank. They sound really, really good. Uh, nice, strong bass coming in actually probably too much bass but that's okay that's yeah. why we have the volume control we can turn it down good thing there the big the big as we said earlier the big thing is the fm and i, I don't even think that's an issue no i don't feel that if you knew it was any different you would know i uh, guess fm am so there it goes there <sighs> all right awesome install we hope you guys enjoyed it if we forgot to mention something let us know in the comments yeah there you go all right guys what do you say, Fernando? On to the next one, guys. On to the next one. Bye.